Hello and welcome to Burning Issues, the only program that provides you a glimpse inside the Wichita Fire Department. I'm Fire Marshal Brad Crisp and in this episode we'll talk about Kansas air quality regulations in Wichita and Central County with an emphasis on the annual April burn restrictions. The Wichita Fire Department began working with the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, Bureau of Air, and the local Office of Environment of Health just over five years ago on implementing burn restrictions in the city of Wichita during the month of April. Stakeholders from across the state work together and continue to work together to explore ways to reduce the impact of smoke, especially during the springtime, on air quality for Wichita residents. The Kansas Department of Health and Environment, Bureau of Air, has delegated authority for implementation of the Kansas Air Quality Regulations in Cedric County to the City of Wichita Office of Environmental Health. Working together, the Office of Environmental Health and the Wichita Fire Department hope to keep Wichita's air quality high and the danger from outdoor burning low. The Wichita Fire Department has a long history of inspecting burn permit sites and assessing their safety as it pertains to that of the surrounding community. In recent years, our partnership with the Office of Environmental Health has strengthened. Joining me today is Tanya Braunlui. Tanya is the air quality specialist who works on air quality, especially ozone air pollution in the region. Tanya, along with the Air Quality Improvement Task Force, implemented the Ozone Advanced Program whose goal is to reduce ozone and improve air quality in Wichita and the surrounding counties. Tanya, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about air quality and ozone, and those are things that I think people are familiar with those terms, but they don't always know what they mean. So I appreciate you being here today. And, Not a and problem. And being a subject matter expert is going to help us provide some clarification. So if you don't mind, uh, let's talk about this burn restriction thing that we have in April and kind of give folks the key points and, and the important part of what that means. The end of March and beginning of April, the ranchers in the Flint Hills like to burn their fields so that they can get nice fresh grass for their, uh, for their cattle. Right. So while they're doing that for the grazing land, they're, they're putting a lot of smoke into the air and we want to make sure that we're in the city aren't adding extra smoke to the air to, that might right. decrease our air quality. Okay, so the farmers and ranchers are, are burning stuff off, trying to rejuvenate the ground mm -hmm. so that their cattle can you know, have good stuff to eat and get rid of those noxious weeds and exactly. the cedar, cedar trees, trees, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but then there's a lot of smoke in the air. And so yeah. here we are, the city of Wichita, Cedric County, uh, and, and we're trying to help protect the air quality in our community while working with folks that are in, in different areas surrounding areas exactly exactly and, and i think in the past we've even had smoke issues coming up from oklahoma or coming to us from eastern kansas yes uh, you know we all share the same air so right. you know what we do affects people upwind from us and what other folks do right. affect us so if i'm a resident in wichita what do the air uh, quality things look like for me or more importantly what do the april burn restrictions look like if i'm just sitting in my backyard what does that look like well, the burn restrictions, we want to make sure that we're not doing any burning in the city mm -hmm. um, during the month of April. So that would, you know, you can still grill, at, you know, cook right. on the barbecue grill, but those chimeneas, you know, burning trash or um, other yard debris, those are the things we want to avoid during the April months. Right. So it's okay to clean up your yard. Just don't pile the leaves up and the grass clippings and the, and the twigs and stuff up in a, in a pile and burn them. Right. I mean, obviously there's some restrictions in Wichita for those kinds of things anyway. Exactly. But we really want to discourage people from doing that in the month of April. Right. Even those folks with the burn permits and they, yeah. they get all of the right, um, they're all their ducks in a row to do open burning yeah. in April. Those are all put on pause until right. till May. Yeah. And we communicate with those folks, the ones that get the burn permits. We let them know, you know, your burn permit is good except during the month of April. We don't want you doing any burning. Right. So. Okay, and, and you mentioned, and I want to I want to hit this point home. If you have a barbecue grill and it's charcoal or it's a wood smoker or something, you can still use those devices to cook for we your family. We all have to eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. we do have to eat, <laughs> so don't be afraid to be able you know to go out there and cook. So, okay, well uh, we've mentioned the word ozone a couple of times mm -hmm. now. Why don't we talk a little bit about what ozone is? I'm sure there's a very technical definition <laughs> for ozone. And yes. Let's try to break it down to something simple that we can all understand. Sure. A lot of folks there's two types of ozone there's the ozone up in the stratosphere that's a couple miles up in the air people refer to that as the ozone layer mm -hmm. that's good ozone that is that protects our planet from extra UV light coming in that keeps us all from getting terribly sunburned every day right. that's good ozone 
bad ozone happens, it's the same chemical, but ozone in the air we breathe every day, so down here close to the ground, mm -hmm. that ozone is harmful for us. It's not good for us to breathe in. It kind of causes maybe like a sunburn on your lungs, makes it hard to breathe, tight chest. Um, folks that have asthma, right. older folks or children who, um, children breathe a lot more than we do and they mm -hmm. play and so they're taking in more of that air. So those are the folks that are really sensitive and we want to protect those people. Okay. So that's why we have the burn restrictions and other, um, other outreach opportunities to let folks know when we might have high ozone days to protect those folks. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. So people with breathing difficulties, whether it's asthma, emphysema, mm -hmm. pneumonia, things like exactly. that. Exactly. It's not necessarily the smoke particles that are causing them problems to breathe, although that's a small piece of mm -hmm. it. It's the actual ozone gas that they're breathing. Right. The, when you burn either fossil fuels mm -hmm. or just you know grasses like we're doing with our, um, with our pasture burning, right. it sends up what we call nitrogen oxides into the air. And those, it's a, just part of what happens when you burn things. And with sunlight and heat and those nitrogen oxides, it creates a chemical reaction in the air and that creates ozone. So um, if we, you know, particulate matter that also comes from burning is also a, a problem for people's health too. Right. But ozone's one of those things, those extra things that we get to pay attention to um, when heat and sunlight's in the mix and those, um, that chemical reaction happens and we make ozone. Right. And the reason we're concerned about ozone here um, in the city of Wichita is we monitor ozone all the time making sure that we stay below the levels that keep us healthy. But we are close in Wichita to exceeding the EPA's limits for ozone. Right. So we want to pay particular attention to days that might be high so that we can do everything we can to, to keep our ozone levels low, reduce those ingredients that form ozone so that um, so we can stay below those EPA limits. Well, we're probably going to talk a little bit more about what the repercussions could be from the EPA in a, in a moment. Mm -hmm. But we've, we've talked a lot about what bad things ozone does. There's some benefit to ozone as well though, right? There's some good things that ozone does for us? Yeah, the, the ozone up in the stratosphere, that protective ozone layer, mm -hmm. that reduces the amount of UV light coming into our planet and you know protects the plants and the people and right. the animals from you know too much UV light, which we all know can be harmful when we get those sunburns in the right. summer. <laughs> exactly. So it's kind of a, you know, it's one of those half a one, Six of one, half a dozen of the other kind exactly. of deals. You gotta have some, but if you have too much, it could be harmful. Right, and we like it okay. in the right place. Up high, good, down low is not good. What, as, as it pertains to the April burn restrictions and the smoke, I mean, obviously that increases the ozone, but is there a specific way that that gets increased? What causes that bad ozone to increase during those months? Well, April's, you know, we're starting to get into spring and those warm sunny days mm -hmm. and the sun and the heat is what triggers that chemical reaction. Okay. And we talked about the NOx, there's also what's called volatile organic compounds, VOCs, we like mm -hmm. to call them for short. So the nitrogen oxides in those VOCs make that chemical reaction because of the heat and sunlight. So we really start paying attention to ozone starting in April. So that's why right. we want to make sure that during this high time for burning, we're really paying attention because the, okay. that heat and sunlight's there to create that chemical reaction that makes right. the ozone. So it's kind of a perfect storm. You have mm -hmm. farmers, ranchers, and others who are needing to burn grasses and things off. Right. Plus, everything's starting to warm up because spring's on the way or summer's getting close. Mm -hmm. And those two things kind of come together to, to form a perfect yep. opportunity for exactly. us to violate Exactly. That's ozone. right. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, you had mentioned uh, the, the EPA, mm -hmm. the obviously monitor and look and see where we're at on any given time. If we exceed the ozone levels, what does that look like for our community? What does that mean? Well, in the biz, we like to say that that's non-attainment. We did not attain the standard or that okay. the EPA set. So if we do exceed the ozone levels and we go into non-attainment, EPA then starts working with the state of Kansas Department of Health and Environment and to help us create a, a plan for our area mm -hmm. to reduce ozone levels. That can trigger some increased regulation, especially for businesses. It might trigger uh, the need for different blends of gasoline that have less NOx and VOCs in oh, there okay. so that we're not putting extra into the air. So it might increase our gas costs, mm -hmm. our gasoline and our fuel costs. Um, Goods and services might start to cost more just because right. if the industries have to pay more to put on technologies that reduce their emissions, right. 
they pass that along to the customer usually. So energy right. costs or costs of other goods and services could increase. Okay, well that makes sense. I would assume there may also be some kind of fine possibly associated no, with that? No, right now they, they don't do fines. They okay. just, they, they kind of, they put on those extra regulations right. which can cause those extra costs to the, to the consumers okay. and to the businesses. So these are all things that we've been working on now for over five years. Yes. We've, we've been working on a plan to help keep things below those limits. Yes, we call it the Ozone Advance Plan. We're right. part of the Ozone Advance Program and we have a path forward that helps us um, you know, cut a path and we wanna, we're starting to work with businesses and other local governments because it's not just a Wichita thing. If we go out of attainment, Sedgwick, Sumner, Butler, and Harvey County are yeah. all in this with us and they'll have those same restrictions and regulations. So sure. we're trying to create teams and we're asking you know, the community to also work with us to do what they can to reduce ozone levels. On right. I think that's, that's probably a great point to try to drive home is it's not just about Wichita, it's not mm -hmm. just about Sedgwick County, it's also about our neighbors. The things that we do affect them, the things that they do affect us, and we're kind of in this together. Exactly. Okay, so obviously burn restrictions are burn restrictions. We're encouraging people not to burn things uh, leading up to the month of April. Mm -hmm. What are some other things that folks who live in this area can do to help reduce some of those emissions? Well, I'd say the first thing that people could do is sign up for ozone alerts. Mm, okay. They're email notifications that if we're predicting a high ozone day, so if that perfect storm is coming where, you know, we've got hot sunny day coming, we're thinking, well, we might see some smoke blowing in mm -hmm. from Flint Hills burning, or if it's not a time for burning, it's later in the summer, you know, it just might be the winds are blowing from a certain direction to sure. blow maybe another city's air to us, or, um, you know, it, sometimes we just kind of get stuck with ozone kind of sitting right on top of us and what right. they call a thermal inversion. So w what folks can do is sign up for these ozone alerts and it lets them know, hey, tomorrow might be a high ozone day. So then folks can take action mm -hmm. and do things that would reduce their emissions of those ingredients that form ozone, those NOx and those VOCs. So for example, they could put off mowing the grass for another day or to a, for another day where the ozone level isn't as high. Exactly, put okay. off mowing the lawn or just mow later in the day. Mm -hmm. If you fuel up your car or do those lawn chores that require mowers or trimmers, right. things that use gasoline, if you put that off till late in the day, the, if you do it you know, after six or 7 p.m., when it's cooler anyway, and that's when you wanna do those chores sure. anyway, uh, those emissions have a chance overnight when the sun's not out to dissipate, you know, because it needs that sunlight to make that chemical right, reaction. Okay. So uh, anything you can do to do those chores late in the day is, is what you want to do. Or just postpone it altogether and carpool maybe to work, right. uh, work from home, anything you can do to reduce driving, reduce using those fossil fuels, you know, turn up the air idling. conditioner a little bit, idling. Right. You never want to idle your car, just waste gas anyway. Right, well, so. when, and as it gets warmer, you don't need to really warm up your car as exactly. much as you do in the winter time, you know, and those kinds of things. And uh, I know all of those seems kind of small and they seem kind of trivial, but I would imagine if you take 380,000 of those things that are happening yep. every day in the big picture, they all kind of add up to exactly. have a positive impact. Yep, it's like the drop in the bucket. One drop in the bucket's not very big, but if everybody puts a drop in the bucket, it's right. big impact. So is there a specific uh, website or a place where people can go to get an ozone alert app on their phone, on their desktop, yep. on their laptop? They're, right now they're, they're ozone alert emails and uh, you can sign up for those at wichita.gov slash ozone. And you can go there, sign up for ozone alert emails and you can also check out just your daily air quality forecast at mm -hmm. airnow.com. Okay, and that's available, uh, th and that's its own website. Yeah, that's its own website, and, it and that does also have an app. AirNow has an app, and that's, the EPA puts that out, and they do great jobs, and you can you know, check the air quality in your area. If you've got right. a soccer game, you know, just make sure everybody's gonna stay nice and healthy. Great, so if somebody wanted more information on not just the April burn restrictions, but on overall air quality, uh, is there a phone number that they can call to get some general questions answered and sure. perhaps get some additional information? Sure, they can call me at 316-268-8350. Great. Well, I sure appreciate you being here today sure, and, and taking your time out. Uh, these are things that we hear a lot about in the news and we hear these buzzwords and these kinds of things and kind of breaking it down and explaining it is, I think, very helpful. So, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. If you'd like to become more involved in the city of Wichita, or if you want to learn more about the Wichita Fire Department, you can go to wichita.gov and click on the Fire Department link, or you can call us at 316-268-4441.
That concludes this episode of Burning Issues. Our mission is to provide our community proactive fire and life safety services through prevention, education, and protection. Remember, Wichita firefighters are highly trained professionals that are your friends and neighbors. They're Wichita's bravest and they're somewhere serving you in many ways every day.